Have you ever wondered why, despite having so many oceans, we still struggle with the lack of drinking water? Imagine being able to turn on a tap and have unlimited water straight from the sea. Sounds incredible, right? But wait, before we continue, if you're interested in understanding the greatest mysteries of science and how they affect our daily lives, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Because today, we're going to reveal the truth about why we don't convert seawater into drinking water, and trust me, the answer will surprise you. We just need to build more desalination plants and problem solved. This is probably the most obvious solution that came to your mind, right? But let me tell you something fascinating. Right now, as you watch this video, scientists in laboratories are creating pure water from nothing, combining hydrogen and oxygen. Sounds like magic, doesn't it? But here's the interesting part. Even though we can create water in a laboratory, the cost of producing just one liter could be enough to buy you a new smartphone. Crazy, right? But let's not lose hope yet. There are places in the world that are doing the impossible. Have you heard of Antofagasta in Chile? This city is doing something that seems straight out of a science fiction movie. Their entire population drinks water that was once part of the Pacific Ocean. How do they do it? Through a process called reverse osmosis, which sounds complicated but is more familiar than you think. But something will surprise you even more. While some countries struggle to get drinking water, others are developing technologies that seem taken from an Isaac Asimov book. In Singapore, for example, they've created something called knee water such an efficient purification system that it can turn wastewater into water purer than regular tap water. Can you imagine? Water that was once waste is now so clean it's used in industrial processes requiring ultra-pure water. It's like we found a way to turn lead into gold, but with water. Did you know that every time we try to replicate the natural process of seawater evaporation, we face a colossal energy challenge? It's like trying to do the sun's job in miniature. And believe me, Competing with a star isn't easy. Ancient salt producers already knew this process, they let the sun do all the work. But when we try to accelerate this naturally slow process, costs skyrocket. Imagine having a super straw with a magic filter that only lets pure water pass through and block salt. Now, multiply that by thousands, and you'll have an idea of how a desalination plant works. But Here's the plot twist. This process requires so much energy that you could power a small city with just what you need to run the plant. And speaking of clouds, here's something that will blow your mind. While we discuss how to convert salt water into drinking water, we're literally flushing millions of gallons of treated water down the drain every day. Have you noticed that we use drinking water for practically everything? From watering plants to washing cars? It's like using mineral water to clean the floor. A bit absurd when you think about it, isn't it? And just when you think you've understood everything, another problem appears. Brine. Do you know what happens to all the salt we remove from the water? It becomes such a potent concentrate that it could alter entire marine ecosystems if not handled properly. It's as if, for every glass of drinking water we produce, we create a small environmental problem. And here's something few people know. There's an emerging technology called membrane distillation that could revolutionize the whole game. Have you noticed how dew forms on plants in the morning? This system mimics that natural process, but on an industrial scale. The fascinating part is that it can run on waste heat from factories, which is normally wasted. It's like killing two birds with one stone. You reduce thermal pollution and get drinking water almost for free. But wait, because this gets even more interesting. In some parts of the world, they're developing systems so advanced, they seem taken from a science fiction movie. Imagine entire buildings designed to capture moisture from the air, like giant water collectors that run on solar energy. In the Atacama Desert, the driest in the world, they're already using this technology, and surprisingly, it's working. But in countries like Saudi Arabia, where money isn't an issue, they're building mega desalination plants that look like industrial cities. The result? They're producing drinking water, yes, but at a cost that would make any finance minister cry. What about solutions that seem obvious but nobody implements? For example, dual piping systems in homes. One circuit for drinking water that you use for drinking and cooking, and another for everything else. Sounds logical, right? The problem is that it would require rebuilding practically all of our city's infrastructure. It's like trying to change a building's foundation while people are living in it. And here's the part nobody tells you. Desalinated water isn't simply water without salt. It's dead water. Sounds dramatic, but it's literal. 
we've removed all the minerals our body needs. It's as if we had to cook the water to make it drinkable again, adding necessary minerals one by one. Here's something that will surprise you. Some companies are developing technologies that could reduce the energy cost of desalination by up to 90%. How? By using something called biomimetic membranes, which basically imitate how nature filters water. It's like we've been trying to invent the wheel when we only needed to observe how the cells in our own body do it. By the way, have you heard about ice crystals trapped at the bottom of the ocean? They're methane hydrates, and some scientists are investigating how to use the same crystalline structure to trap salt during desalination. It's like building a molecular prison for salt. If they can make it work, we could be looking at the biggest breakthrough in desalination since the invention of reverse osmosis. And the best part is that this process would consume just a fraction of the energy we currently use. And speaking of costs, have you wondered why some Persian Gulf countries can afford to desalinate water like there's no tomorrow? The answer lies in their energy surplus. When you have so much oil and natural gas that you don't know what to do with it, suddenly desalination doesn't seem so expensive. But here's the interesting part. They're investing billions in research to make this process more efficient using solar energy because they know oil won't last forever. So are we doomed? Not at all. In fact, scientists are working on incredible solutions. Have you heard about machines that extract water from air? Yes, like those dehumidifiers you have at home, but on a grand scale. In some parts of Africa, they're using this technology, and it's working. But perhaps the biggest problem isn't technical, but psychological. There's some resistance to drinking water that we know comes from the sea or has been recycled. It's curious because all the water we drink has been naturally recycled thousands of times. As an old saying among water scientists goes, there's no new water, only recycled water. And here's something to leave you thinking. While we debate how to make seawater drinkable, nature has been doing it for millions of years through the water cycle. Every raindrop that falls is essentially naturally distilled seawater. The problem is that this natural process can no longer keep up with our growing demand. It's like trying to drink from a hose while someone keeps squeezing it tighter and tighter. But the real solution might be in something we do every day without thinking. Recycling water. Did you know that the water you drink today could be the same water a dinosaur drank millions of years ago? Nature has the most efficient recycling system in the world, and we're learning to imitate it. And here comes the most important part. The future of water isn't in one magical solution, but in many solutions working together. Imagine cities where shower water is recycled for toilets, where roofs capture rainwater, and where, yes, some solar-powered desalination plants operate for emergencies. And you know what's most ironic about all this? The more we advance technologically, the more we realize that the most elegant solutions are those that imitate nature. Mangroves, for example, are natural experts in desalination converting salt water into fresh water to survive. Some scientists are studying how they replicate this process at the molecular level. It's fascinating to think that the solution to one of our biggest technological problems could be hidden in the roots of a coastal tree. Before we finish, let me ask you a question. What would you do to help conserve water? Tell me in the comments. And if this video helped you better understand this crucial topic, give it a like and share it with someone you think needs to know about it. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this, where we break down humanity's big problems and explore their possible solutions. And remember, the next time you turn on the tap, think about the entire journey that water has made to reach you. See you in the next video, where we'll continue unraveling the mysteries of the science that surrounds us.